Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The first phase of the silting the John Compton Dam is complete. The Ministry of Education to implement a comprehensive strategy for the safety of students and caring for those entrusted with the health and wellness of the nation. Significant infrastructure investment in the island's water sector continues to roll out with the completion of the first phase of the John Compton Dam desilting project. Here's Anissa Antoine with the details. The first phase of the John Compton Dam project saw the removal of the sediments around the dam wall to clear the lower abstraction port with the overall aim of increasing the plant's water reserve capacity. The John Compton Dam had accumulated over 1.7 million cubic meters of silt over the years, displacing over 400 million gallons of water. According to the head of the project management unit at Wasco, Gordon Wyke, a large share of the silt can be credited to the passage of devastating hurricanes and tropical storms, including Hurricane Thomas in 2010 and Tropical Storm Debbie in 1994. Our dredging depot took place from about October of last year till about February of this year, where we were able to remove about 85,000 cubic meters of sediment from the reservoir itself. So that reservoir immediately has more capacity and it allowed us to clear that lower port completely. So that lower port is now available for, for use. So along with this, of course, is that we had to take the sediment from here and place it at what is known as the sediment disposal area. That area, so that the sediment is now there, that area was completed in January of this year and now accommodates the sediment we have removed. So, that, so, so the project in its, in, in its initial um, phases is now fully complete with the um, successful removal of sediment, clearing the lower port and the building of the sediment disposal area. Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Water and Sewage Company, Wasco, Francis Denbo, explains that there is still a large amount of sediment to be removed, which may take up to approximately 10 years. Wasco's immediate goal, however, is to extract an additional 300,000 cubic meters of sediment. And to illustrate um, the amount of silt, um, it's the equivalent of roughly 50 football fields each football field filled with 20 feet of silt. So that's a tremendous amount of silt that has to be desilted or extracted from the dam to go into the sediment disposal area. And there is no way that this could be done within one year or two years. It's a long process. It's a long process between one year to ultimately 10 years, 8 to 10 years to do that process. And why? In any one year, you could only extract roughly 200,000 cubic meters of silt. And you could only do that during the rainy season. You cannot extract silt from the dam during the dry season or during the drought. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, expressed his satisfaction with the work done by the Wasco team and contractors, saying that the milestones achieved thus far on this initiative ties into the broader program agenda for development within the sector. I mean, it was very challenging and like we just said a while ago, we have no control over the weather and when we gave a contract to do the construction of the settlement disposable area. We targeted it to, to coincide with the dry season. Unfortunately, that year, it was not a traditional dry season. It was a rainy season and with the, the contractor, unfortunately, lost almost a, a one year of, of, of downtime as, as it pertains to the impact of the, of the rain that affected the dredging. But um, I'm, I must say, it's something new to us in the region. Um, and we have learned from the experience. Um, and we were able to accomplish it because there have been talk from since Thomas 2010 as far as dredging the, the John Compton Dam. The second phase of the John Compton Dam desilting project is expected to commence in approximately three months. From the communications unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Following a rash of attacks in the education sector, officials of the Ministry of Education have been holding talks with key partner agencies on strategies to keeping students safe. More from Homer DeMarc. 
A safety network for students is being created in response to a recent spate of attacks on students in District 3. The Ministry of Education first met with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to solicit their assistance. In the second phase of the creation of this network, the Ministry held a meeting with stakeholders. Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer is the Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education. As mentioned last week, we met with the police, a very fruitful meeting, out of which came quite strategic plans to support our students and their well-being. Today we're meeting with the transport services, as well as the police are represented. We have our chief transport officer with us, principals are there as well, because we want to make sure that everybody works together for the good, not only of our students, for the wider community. School Health Safety Officer Benez Kodra explained the meeting allowed stakeholders to discuss solutions to maintain the safety of students outside the school grounds. Coming out of our meeting last week, um, we have already seen an increase in the presence of the police on the various bus stops. We have um, devised creative ways with the police in terms of keeping our students safe both on the way to school and from school. So we have several in initiatives that we have already implemented and we are looking to sustain most of those initiatives so that everybody would feel safe whether they are going to school or coming from school. Identifying that the transport sector plays a pertinent role in meeting the school, students will be encouraged to utilize the school shuttle system instead of walking to and from school. The way we do that is by having the school having a, a, a proper plan, um, working with the, the principal, the students, the teachers, as well as the parents. The parents also have a very important part to play, and that is to encourage the, student, the, the children to at least take the, the public bus or at least um, communicate with the, the, the said associations who needs help and who, who doesn't need help. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force has increased patrols at bus stops. Acting Inspector of Police Calixtus Schalmein says, although their resources are limited, they are committed to playing their part in the safety of students. When we um, was invited to the meeting, um, we brainstormed as to the ways that in which that we can assist in um, curbing that situation that is presently on that area of um, Waterworks Lesson area. Um, our main um, focus will be traffic patrol. We have also identified um, as to what means that we're going to take up in, in um, patrolling that area. Nina Kodra Eugene, Acting Chief Transport Officer, ensured that the ministry will continue to collaborate with stakeholders to maintain the student safety network. From the Government Information Service, I'm Huma Dimak reporting. In light of the challenges brought forward by COVID-19, Massey Store St. Lucia Limited, in collaboration with the Love St. Lucia Initiative, is providing local manufacturers and suppliers on island with additional support. The largest retailer and supermarket chain in the Caribbean has chosen to help over a dozen micro, small and medium-sized enterprises develop and improve their business operations in 2021. We have more in this report. The rebranded by local campaign dubbed Love St. Lucia was launched in June last year by the Ministry of Commerce in collaboration with Massey Stores, among other public and private sector partners. The campaign aims to build resilience in the St. Lucian economy by maximizing the potential of local industry, improving consumer awareness, and increasing domestic market share of local manufacturers and service providers. Division Head for Merchandising, Local Supplier Relations and Sales, Linda Oje, says Massey Stores has always worked very closely with local manufacturers and suppliers, so it was only natural that the company would back the initiative. We believe that we owe it to the public to have the St. Lucian product, and we also encourage the growth of our St. Lucian manufacturers and suppliers. According to Mrs. Auger, since the larger companies tend to already have the infrastructure, Massey Stores will collaborate more with the smaller and medium-sized suppliers to develop and improve their business operations. We have a lot of small and medium suppliers with great ideas, young people who want to start a new business and have also seen the, the, the dearth in the market of certain products and want to do some things, but they need guidance. 
So these are the people we really try to work with we, um, and in various ways. They come to us, we give them ideas of what products we're looking for because you can't have everybody just doing the same product and you'll find in some categories that, that we really have only one choice or even two choices and maybe they're just imported. Two of the suppliers featured for the year thus far are Artisan Pastry Limited and vegan ice cream makers Two Scoops. Artisan Pastries owned by husband and wife Michelle and Gail Reggie, who with the help of a handful of staff produce a line of freshly baked quality French pastries with no preservatives. I feel very happy that I'm able to do something that people enjoy, something different, something that I'm proud of, something that I know it's healthy and it's, it's something that is available overseas and then I'm happy that we can bring it here so that everybody can taste a little of what's in Martinique or even in France at a reasonable price. The owners of Two Scoops, Didymus Mayers and Deborah Donai, are the only producers of vegan ice cream on Ireland. What inspired their journey, Ms. Donai says, was the need to come up with a product that people who are lactose intolerant could still enjoy. Me working at the, at the hotels and, and realizing how many people are actually going down the vegan road now and we basically didn't have much um, vegan products that way in St. Lucia. So I decided to try my hand at, you know, coming up with the local flavor ice creams and um, get a, a particular base milk, vegan milk base, a plant-based milk, I should say, that would work four ice creams that will get a nice creamy product and we came up with what we have right now. Marcy Store St. Lucia Limited through the Love St. Lucia campaign continues to provide support to small and medium-sized suppliers like Artisan Pastry Limited and Two Scoops, helping them build capacity so they can expand and play a more significant role in rebuilding the island's economy. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. Nurses around the island receive care packages as a token of gratitude and support for the work they continue to do. More in this report from Fernel Neptune. The St. Lucia Nurses Association recently presented care packages to the nurses at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, expressing appreciation for their commitment to the profession. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Benson Emil, express heartfelt gratitude to the nurses for the services they extend to the public. As St. Lucians, we're grateful. As an institution in the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, you know, we're grateful. As a Ministry of Health and Wellness, we're eternally grateful for the services that you provide and the services that you continue to provide. As much as possible, we will support you in your endeavor, but we know that you are the ones on the ground you are the ones making the commitment. You know, you are the ones making that self-sacrifice every day to ensure that we cared for as citizens of St. Lucia. Chief Executive Officer of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, Siobhan James Alexander, says she's extremely proud of the nurses and will continue working with them to bring about success. It's indeed a pleasure that we're standing here, that I am standing here, and recognizing your efforts. The last year, I am sure, has been overwhelming. And we must recognize your dedication, your loyalty, your selflessness. And I think sometimes these things go unheard of and unspoken about, but we need to always celebrate our key wins. And for us to actually achieve what we've done over the year, despite all odds, is significant. And so for now, I want us to celebrate that win. Let's give ourselves a tap on the back and say thank you. The nurses have been phenomenal. President of the St. Lucia Nurses Association, Alicia Baptiste, saluted the nurses and asked them to continue being indispensable. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. 
On with Monday, St. Lucians at home and abroad, unified by their Christian faith, observe the National Day of Prayer and Fasting, Praise and Thanksgiving, declared by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney and the Government of St. Lucia. The observance featured participation from all faith-based organizations with church services, gospel performances, prayer, spoken word, and testimonies. In virtual form, the events were carried live via the national television network, partner stations, and through live streaming. In his address during the national observance, the Prime Minister explained that given the challenges of the pandemic and tensions surrounding the upcoming general election, it was determined that the country needed to seek God. At the time we are about to embark on a general election, we need to invoke the virtues of wisdom, tolerance, and mutual respect and tone down the volume of the heightened rhetoric, senseless threats, and bickering and occasional tension that we have grown all too accustomed to. We need to thank God for His goodness towards us that we have not been overwhelmed by the virus. But we also need to understand we are still under the threat of the COVID-19 pandemic, and it remains a clear and present danger. We need to petition the Lord for His blessings so we employ the discipline and the practice that are designed to ensure our safety and the welfare of our families. During Monday's broadcast, various religious figures addressed the viewership on approaching the day seriously. Emmanuel Charles is the pastor at the Faith Baptist Church in Corinth, Grosley. Many are engaging in, in conduct that God does not like. And regardless how much we fast, today is the day of prayer and fasting, but if there is wickedness in our hearts, if there is wickedness in our intention, if there is wickedness in our behavior, God will not hear us. Even though we fast, God will call this a mockery. The 11-hour live broadcast of prayer and fasting, praise and worship was aired on week Monday. On the 22nd of May, St. Lucia joined the global community in observing International Day for Biological Diversity, another theme were part of the solution. The UN designation is focused on issues of climate change, food and water security, health and sustainable livelihoods. International Day for Biological Diversity, celebrated annually on May 22, is geared towards increasing the understanding and awareness of biodiversity issues. This year's theme, where part of the solution, was chosen to be a continuation of the momentum generated in 2020 under the overarching theme, Our Solutions Are in Nature, which served as a reminder that biodiversity remains the answer to several sustainable development challenges. Organization of Eastern Caribbean States OECS's Technical Specialist in the Environment and Sustainability Division, General Gabriel, stated that humans depend on biodiversity for a number of things, including food, shelter and livelihoods, and sometimes it is hard to maintain the balance. We rely on these resources, so we need trees to, to build our homes, we need clean water to bathe and to drink, um, and so sometimes we have overexploited some of these resources. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have bad farming practices which de deplete our soils of the nutrients which we need. Mm -hmm. It depletes it of some of those beneficial viruses and bacteria and, and microorganisms which we need. So our actions have sometimes uh, had impacts on biodiversity and so that's why we can come in now and be the solution by changing our own human behavior. From nature-based solutions to climate, health issues, food and water security, and sustainable livelihoods, biodiversity is the foundation upon which humans can build back better. Acting Chief Forestry Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, Physical Planning and Cooperatives, Alwyn Donnelly, explained that programs have been put in place to preserve biodiversity. The Forestry Department has had this program of selective Harvesting. Harvesting. For example, you know, in the forest, you know, people who were into house making and uh, uh, timber production went into selective harvesting. Mm -hmm. So there were certain criteria that we would use mm -hmm. to be able to um, sell um, trees 
um, if the species had been, we had found that it had been over harvested, then, you know, in certain uh, locations, we would not remove remaining individuals, you know. Um, we would also look at the topographic area, how close it is, you know, to water sources, mm -hmm. and even has been so specific that if you remove one tree, what damage that it will cause, you know, to the microclimate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did those things. Biodiversity looks at the human well-being in the present and in the future, and its rapid decline threatens nature and people alike. According to the Global Assessment Report on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services in 2019 by the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services at UNESCO, the main global drivers of biodiversity loss are climate change, invasive species, overexploitation of natural resources, pollution and urbanization. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur, Madame, Department de la Responsabilité pour Formation en Gouvernement de la CI, ça c'est GIS, ça c'est depuis Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Capositeur Nouvelle en Créole, Visiteur Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre de la CI, on est avec Alain Chasney, qui a son site de la CI pour embrasser un plus haut esprit de l'amour, l'un pour l'autre, en même façon qu'il dit, m'a dit nous pour faire. Premier ministre Chasney fait appel à cela devant l'adresse li dimanche le 23 en mois de mai 2021 pour observance de la journée nationale des prières à cette ci qui prend cours le 24 mois de mai 2021. Premier ministre l'a fait comprendre c'est faut nous en tout ni dégouer la mousse à en parmi les enfants, l'école et les communes aussi. Il y a pour la nation ouest de Churchill, qui a fait des prix avec l'autre vieux commissation et laissé. L'esprit désagréable, ça là. Principalement, qu'on peut y avoir préparé pour tenir l'autre élection. Premier ministre Chasney fait nation à changer qui, pandémie, qu'on là, et puis nous toujours, et qu'a continué à menacer sa tête nous, et que c'est un gros danger. Il dit que c'est raison qui fait nous ni pour créer à soudier, pour continuer ni miséricorde, pour continuer ni miséricorde à son nom, à toutes les, mais aussi où est nécessaire. Pour nous même montrer Dieu qui nous vraiment a voudu pour l'année plus l'amour à parmi en alors pour Dieu même ça continue pour protéger pays cette ici contre mauvais maladies ça là et pour aider cette ici adopter bon principe et pour continuer suivre tout protocole qui va aider protéger nous contre maladie corona premier ministre chasse de crier à ce tout cette ici pour tirer la main ensemble et faire un grand pétition pour dire accorder cette ici bénédiction, protection, la paix et l'amour. Ministère des Affaires Constitution et Travaux, j'ai annoncé qu'il y a commencé le travail, et bien j'ai commencé le travail à ce projet pour Gouan la tournée en Union qui a commencé mardi le 25 à mois de mai 2021. Le projet a aidé pour improuver le mouvement trafic plus facilement et qui a limité à ce dégoué voiti qui a comblé avec facilité, meilleure protection et précaution pour les chauffeurs et les gens qui ont servi chemin pour traverser. Le travail a fait en trois phases pour réduire à ce dégoué restriction pour les gens qui ont navigé à ce chemin et aussi pour faciliter l'opération, les business et les services de secours. 
première phase là, c'est pour grandir à ce chemin ça là, pour tirer ces parcs là qui étaient là avant, et pour établir l'autre parc, et aussi pour bâtir tout trois neuf. Il y a un spécial appel qui est pour encourager les personnes qui ont servi à ce chemin ça là, pour prendre une bonne précaution, et suivre ces directions direction trafic, et instruction les personnels qui ont engagé un projet ça là, les gens qui ont navigé à ce chemin yodien, côté projet ça là, qui fait. Skelly Construction Services Limited, qui est responsable pour projet ça là, supposé finir en trois mois depuis la de bon temps. Les cultivateurs figues, et bien les femmes figues, c'est ici, supposé recevoir tout de suite un bon soulagement des finances pour l'argent qui est déjà supposé en poche, qui était supposé en poche. Mais c'est là qu'il nous a responsabilité pour l'agriculture et la pêche, c'est ici. On a essayé Joseph déclaré que le gouvernement, en bas ministère, j'ai décidé de prolonger la main pour les femmes figues. Après, c'est tellement longtemps que je suis payé pour dégouer soulagement ça là. Mais le ministre agricole a dit que l'agence n'a pas qu'à aller en confort l'organisation NFTO. Selon Honorable Joseph, il a trouvé ce pour le cabinet et le département avec l'agence d'accord qui ne s'est pas fait en bas strict que l'organisation NFTO qui a existé présentement. Nous ne pouvons pas faire ça. Nous voulons l'information, nous voulons savoir qui banque compte ces femmes ça ni et puis là, ça. Sa... Nous avons joué le management, nous avons joué le management, nous avons management, nous avons joué le management, et puis un management qui advise nous, et puis nous avons mis un système en place pour vous lancer ça directly pour payer ces fameuses-là en petit cacade. On nous a payé toutes 7 et 8 weeks, parce que nous avons voulu at least 500 000 dollars advance pour payer les fameuses directly. Au commencement, nous avons payé une winner, et puis, of course, ces staff-là. Le ministre agricole a fait comprendre aussi que. Ces directeurs d'organisation n'ont pas en état pour recevoir le paiement. Mais c'est une formation où les directeurs ont été payés et les femmes ont été payés pour le paiement. Ça ne va pas être correct. 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 Donc, je ne veux pas payer les directeurs. C'est votre directeur. Vous avez fait 20 jours. Vous avez fait 20 jours. Donc, vous avez fait 20 jours. Et puis, vous avez fait 20 jours. 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 Le ministre agricole a annoncé qu'il va de dépasser et recevoir information que NFTO a choisi trois membres pour assister à ce board neuf là et à présent des marches ni pour faire pour légitimer l'opération à ces opérations neuf ça là. Parce que board ça et puis changement ça ni pour jouer ça va être legal approval et puis ces femmes là même le Avocat qui fait un changement, il y a un changement, et puis les femmes de nous ont dit nous sommes une légale entité, nous avons trois membres du gouvernement et quatre femmes pour le bord de neuf. Mais notre question est ça, nous avons aussi dit que nous avons caché les femmes qui sont sous l'âgement, nous avons dit que 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 nous avons dit moi, ça dit que j'ai un peu de l'information que j'ai eu, que ça a été posé à faire. Si vous avez fait, vous avez fait un petit peu de ça, parce que nous avons eu plus de 500 000 dollars d'avance à ce loan au gouvernement approuvé par nous. Le gouvernement approuvé un loan de 4,5 millions de dollars. Donc, nous avons eu plus de 500 000 millions de dollars pour payer les femmes. Et monsieur, madame, ça c'était la voix, ministre, la quelle responsabilité pour l'agriculture et la pêche. En cette ci ça c'est honorable Ezekiel Joseph, à ce développement NFTO et puis ministre. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé pour la nouvelle là. Je dis à monsieur, madame, je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Pour chercher depuis moi encore, c'est dire que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour cette nouvelle. À quoi vous avez la vie? Je vous remercie pour cette nouvelle. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.